Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And I hope you just enjoyed our educational video on recycling pumpkins. As you can see to my left here, we still have our setup from the recycling your pumpkins display where we talked about pureeing the seeds and you can even puree the flesh and all the nutritional benefits it's gonna bring to both the soil as well as maximizing the fruit and vegetable production in your next year's garden. Check out this Eureka lemon tree I'm under right now. This is a two-year-old Eureka lemon tree. And what we're gonna talk about today is girdling trees, specifically um, rodents girdling, girdling your trees. In the spring and in the summer, there's plenty of seeds and fruit for a lot of the rodents to enjoy within the garden and within your community. These includes you know, the fruits and seeds and, um, and, and, and insects that are all in abundance, again, in spring and summer. But come fall and winter, these same rodents are now starving. They're starving to the point that they'll begin to girdle your trees. They'll chew on the bark to get to the underlying sap, which is the sugars and the carbohydrates that'll sustain these rodents through the winter. This is an issue that affects trees across the country, and specifically there's a nursery I visited in San Francisco that said that there's a rat problem that's affecting um, his community and his customers year round. And I know for us specifically here in Los Angeles, we're about a mile away from the lake, and I know there's a lot of rats within our community, and I know the rats are attributing partially to the girdling that's within our properties, and I'm gonna share with you an example in just a minute. But I wanna share with you what I'm doing over here. You can see that originally, and there's a little bit of brown paint that's still on the upper part, but I'm now in the process of um, coating the entire tree with the Ivory Organics color white. And I'm gonna explain the benefits to you in just a moment here. And the goal when painting it, and again, we're doing this all organically, is to get about an inch below the mulch layer, and you can see I'm like right where the roots are going into the soil. I'm hoping you can capture each of these individual roots. And what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna go with the Ivory Organics product and just coat it as low as I can go to protect those entire surfaces. The way this product is working is the product has castor oil in it among six other different oils for a total of seven oils that are in the product. The castor oil, once the rodents come to the tree, are gonna taste it and leave your plant alone they're gonna know that this is a plant that they're not gonna enjoy the taste of. So that's basically how it works, and let me explain to you a little bit more just around the corner, follow me. So if you come over here, you can see that we just used the Yellow Label product. The Yellow Label product has the base, which is the um, quote unquote paint, and then it has all of these seven natural oils. If you come in a little closer here, you can see it has organic castor oil. And this is the oil that repels rodents from taking a bite into your tree. Cinnamon oil, clove oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, and spearmint oil will now naturally repel insects from boring into your trees as well. So if there's any exposed areas such as um, your graft lines or a pruned branch, which is now exposed area for, for insects to get into it and start hollowing out the center supporting structure of the wood, then these oils are gonna repel it. And let me share with you now the base. The, um, the base of it is iron oxide, which controls the color, limestone, which is the historical ancient way of um, whitewashing your plants, mica, which is a clay base, which also has anti-pest properties as well, and then milk proteins as well as silica. Together, when this product is applied to your plants, it'll last on your plants for about a year. So it's gonna offer about a year of protection by doing a, a first and a second coat on your trees, those oils are gonna be, um, basically embedded within the product and offering that defense to the plant over several months and again, up to a year and possibly in excess of a year. If you take a look at the blue label product, this is simply called whitewash, protection against summer sunburn and winter sun scald. No mention of insects and rodents. However, it still has the added active ingredients of garlic powder and cinnamon powder, not the oils. And again, the same base ingredients of the iron oxide, limestone, mica, milk, and silica. So. Here's that product, which is the whitewash formula, the um, yellow label, which is the three-in-one product, and then there's the ready-to-use spray if you're looking to basically coat the entire plant and offer protection from the extremes of both summer sunburn and winter sun scald, in addition to having the seven oils to protect the plant from those pests as well. Well, let's get started more so. I've got a few examples to share with you in the backyard. Follow me. So here we are now at the base of our three-in-one apple tree. I always like to put in every single video of the month, and here we are now the first week of December, so you can see the leaves are 
just starting to turn yellow. But here in Southern California, specifically Los Angeles, the tree is still holding on to its leaves. But I expect within the next month, this whole plant should turn to yellow leaves, drop its leaves, and hopefully start blooming come February, March with the blossoms of the apple. And here we are at the trunk of the tree. I grafted this three-in-one apple tree with three varieties of apples. The one on my left is the Granny Smith. The one here in front of me is a reddish green family favorite apple. And then the one behind me is a um, red variety of apple as well. I believe it's the Macintosh. And what we've done here, if you take a look, you can come a little closer. I want you to see this branch over here that's exposed. This was actually pruned after we coated the tree trunk in the Ivory Organics color brown. But this here needs to be sealed. I don't have the brown next to me right now, but I'm just gonna take my Ivory Organics white and seal that exposed surface. The concept being that would have otherwise been an entryway for beetles and termites to enter the barkless wood that offers the protection to keep those um, insects out. This here is the Ivory Organics color white. These three trunks were painted last about a year ago. So you can see that it's starting to get um, you can start seeing the underlying bark as the tree trunk is expanding as well with, again, the brown, the white, and the green. And if you want to come in a little closer, I want you to get all of these colors so you can see the expansion that's happening on each of those trunks. The other thing I want to share with you is a lot of the research, and I'll share with you at the end of this video um, a couple of links to PDFs that lead to about a dozen university studies from East Coast to West Coast that talk about the benefits of whitewashing your plants, one at the beginning, of installation of your trees or a planting of your um, trees and plants and the other one being for your more mature trees when you're doing the summer pruning and allowing too much light in that's also a risk of sunburn within the tree as well so another benefit of whitewashing your plants but most of these university studies will talk about then going to your paint store and then talking about the use of using a latex white paint and the reason they would then, and usually in my studies I, or in my um, class lecture presentations, I would talk about, so are we gonna use interior or exterior latex paint? And most of this research will say use interior latex paint because it has less chemicals than the exterior latex paint. But the point is it still has a lot of chemicals in the product. We have, um, the interior latex paint has added algicides, fungicides, and a lot of preservatives so it can last on whatever is painted for decades. However, your tree trunk, just like the skin on your body, your skin is changing itself on average every 30 to 60 days. Your tree trunk similarly is changing its bark every year or two. So if you're putting latex paint, whether it's interior or exterior, you're gonna end up with paint that's gonna end up in your soil and within your community for many decades. And So the importance of doing things organically in your organic garden, we're now getting also a lot of calls from surrounding farms as well that are using organic fertilizers and organic pesticides up in the trees but they're painting their tree trunks with paint and that is a no-no because all that paint is ultimately going to end up in the soil in their organic gardens so a lot of these organic farms are also evolving into using organic paint as well um, and organic solutions to preserving their trees from the extremes of the summer the extremes of the winter and offering all the protection and specifically, Ivory Organics has those seven natural oils to then also further repel insects as well as rodents from girdling your tree. So I'm gonna be coating this with a second coat, and here we are at the first week of December. I could have also done this in the last month or two, but the goal is to make sure that there's ample castor oil protection, and even the other oils offer some rodent defense as well. The spearmints in there also offer some defense, um, and I think there's a couple other oils that also offer other defense as well to keeping the rodents away from your prized trees. Let me share with you a couple of examples of what could happen if you don't coat them. Follow me. So here we are now in the experimental part in the back furthest corners of our property. And this is where I basically have all the starter trees and plants that then work their way back into the garden, which are down below. If you take a look, you can see the apple tree. We talked about the three in one. It's right there, it's down below. And here we are in this very narrow strip of property that's behind me and in front of me. Um, over here, there's a section of apple trees that I've started. Specifically, there's three of them in containers. This one has suffered, I want to say, probably one of the worst girdling of the three, but all of them have been girdled, and I'm going to share with you in just a second. If you come in a little closer, I'm going to try to spin this tree around. I want you to see 
all of the gnawing that's happened. Like this here is the bark that's up above, and here the bark's missing. The rodent, whether it be a squirrel or a rat, or it could be, you know, any other critter, it could even be rabbits. Um, but I know specifically, like I said, in this area, there is a plague of rats, unfortunately, that are plaguing this part of our community um, that a lot of neighbors are dealing with. But you can see that it's taken a bite out of the bark, and now there's no bark, which is, you know, protecting the underlying cambium tissue. So there's also no cambium tissues on this area. The only life now is coming from behind. And actually, it looks like it may have girdled Let's see how far it went. Yeah, this this apple tree has been girdled all the way around. So it could end up killing the rest of the upper structure, which you can see here with the leaves. So this apple tree has a very slim chance of surviving another year, considering it has no bark and very little to no cambium tissues to support the flow of the juices and the sugars and the waters and the nutrients between the roots and those upper leaves and that communication that's happening between the two. So this plant may not make it. Take a look at this trunk over here. And again, this is how like a three in one apple tree could be born. You can see I've got this branch and this branch and this branch that was created from a rootstock over here that was pruned and creating these three branches. So this was in the process of being another multi, multi grafted um, tree. But let's take a look at the girdling that happened on this over here as well. Take a look. And you can see that it was girdled on this side, but there's still some bark on this side. And the cambium tissues are that dark brown and it's healing over. And in a year or two, with proper protection like we're gonna do next, it'll heal over those wounds and, and hopefully have good fluidity on all sides of the apple tree. So here we are going to now coat and protect the apple trunk like so. And we're gonna go all the way around. And you can see that it girdled at least a foot off the ground. And after a foot, it was fine. I'm gonna share a couple other examples in just a second here. Let me just finish coating this one. And you can see we've got a nice, thick coat of protection now where the plant can continue to heal. We've done this all organically. I don't know if we discuss this part of the label over here. If you come in a little closer, you can see that it's also registered material for use in organic agriculture as well. Um, let's read the front of it. Protection against damaging sunburn insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs as a non-toxic, env environmentally safe and organic product. So we've just done this. Let me share a couple other examples over here. Here's another potted apple tree. And take a look for us. You can see that it's got, this here's a passion leaf that got attached, but you can see it's only got a couple of leaves left. Um, I'm hoping there's still some life in this tree, but take a look at how bad this tree's also been girdled. You can see something's been chewing all over the bark. And again, being that these trees are so young, I didn't go through all the steps of protecting everything behind the wall over here. And here's the third one. I'm hoping you can see as well. You can see right there. You can see something else also chewed right there. So of all of the fruit trees that I had behind my wall, for some reason, the apple trees were targeted this year. Two years ago, it was one of my two to three year old lemon trees that was targeted and it in fact killed the tree because it girdled all the way around. Um, so I've seen this firsthand on citrus. We've seen this together on our apple tree. Um, and I know this is an issue that affects growers all around the country and I hope you found this video informative and educational and if so be sure to like it and most importantly by subscribing below you'll be connected to all of our other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.